Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial and we're going to look at the software of choice for design of experiments called DOE Pro. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to Complexity Made Simple and the subject of today's DOE Pro uh, tutorial is the ability to analyze an interaction in a system and to use the interaction to essentially switch a variable off. Now, before we go to the software and we look at a DOE and we uh, discover how to analyze interactions, what I'd like to do, first of all, is to just remind you how complicated interactions are and how crazy they make your processes, how difficult they make your processes to understand. So I've got a process here, it's, it's the hydraulic hammer, um, and just a reminder what we're, what we're essentially doing, I'll switch the process on, uh, we are riveting, we are hitting rivets into a surface, um, and uh, we want to go minus 12 to plus 12, hit zero is what we're trying to do, which means that the rivet is flush to the surface. And um, there, are six, there are six variables in this thing, so hydraulic pressure, rivet density, surface temperature, hammer friction, uh, hammer type, and fluid type. So six, six variables. Um, and we have an interaction in this thing, which is the surface temperature and the hammer friction. The two of those uh, interact, essentially, and I just want to show you how complicated that makes the process, especially for you to try and understand it, just by one factor testing. Because that's what we're talking about here. We've got, we've got a DOE, we've got a designed experiment. Designed experiments are always the fastest way to find out the true nature of your process. Of course, you always want to do it quicker, you want to do it cheaper, and you want to do one-factor testing. Well, let me show you what happens when you do one-factor testing when there's an interaction sitting in the middle of your process. So we're going to have a look what surface temperature does to... The process so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wind the surface temperature up there it goes up to 50 what did it do so we're looking at the top graph by the way so the top graph is the the mean it's the average result so as I swung that up nothing happened let's swing it back down anything happen well not really not, not much is happening okay so the surface temperature really doesn't do anything let's just pop it back to uh, just pop it back to its midpoint. The surface temperature really doesn't do anything. Let's see what hammer friction does then. So we'll swing on hammer friction. We do the same sort of thing. So let's bump this up. What we got? Does hammer friction do anything? No, not really. It's not really move the process. Not, not so you can see anyway. Nothing dramatic. Nothing dramatic is happening. As you play with the hammer friction, hammer friction comes right down. Um, so it's not really doing anything, is it? Now let's assume that these two variables cost us money, the higher they get. So if the two of them don't do anything, simple thing to do is to wind them both to the bottom because that would be the cheapest place and they don't do anything. Now the hammer friction already is sitting at the bottom. So let's wind surface temperature down to meet it. Here we go, because it doesn't do anything, does it? Oh, hang on. It does do something now. Uh, flipping heck. Um, well, I can't quite, can't quite understand that now. Let's, let's just check the hammer friction, because that wasn't doing anything before. Let's take that now. Up. Oh, okay. Now, now that, hang on. The hammer friction is doing something. Well, he wasn't doing anything a moment ago. Surely those tests wouldn't lie to me, would they? Well, those tests aren't lying to you, but what you're not doing is you're not testing the system in a way that you can observe the interaction. And there is a strong interaction between those two variables. And I'm going to show you how to see the interaction. And... Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the interaction to turn one of those variables off 
Um, and, and that's the real beauty of interactions in your system. They are highly complex if you've got them, and they will make your process very complicated. But if you know that you've got them, and you know how to use them properly, you can do some great things. You can do some great things with your uh, process. So let's, let's show you how to use the interaction um, to essentially turn a variable off. So what I've already prepared is a DOE for five factors. So if you'd gone to create design and you'd gone computer aided and you'd gone five factors, you would have you would have picked up the, the 16 run half factorial. As a reminder, by the way, if you are doing chemistry, you do not want to do half fractions. You want to do full factorial. So this is mechanics. And we are safe doing half fractions with mechanics. So that's the DOE that I've set up. There's only five factors in there. And that's because one of the factors I've already locked off. And it's river density. River density drives the standard deviation. Therefore, I've locked it down. And I've only moved the other five variables. So we're going to go in now and we're going to analyze this DOE. So I've hit multiple regression. Just waiting for the computer to catch up. And there we have it. Uh, it's generated a regression table. Uh, so we can now see, and we're only going to look, because we, we, we're not trying to influence standard deviation, I'm not interested in the, the information on the right-hand side here, which is the standard deviation model. I'm only interested in the model here. Uh, that drives uh, the mean. And what I'm interested in, look, hammer friction and surface temperature, BC. Yeah, the BC effects. And I'm looking for the BC interaction. And here's the BC interaction. Let's just blow this up so we can see it a little bit better. So uh, the BC interaction, look. There is the BC interaction. That thing right there. This coefficient here, 21.778, this is whatever you were measuring. So whenever you look at the coefficients, this is the equation, if you remember. So this is the full equation. Whenever you look at these coefficients, they are in whatever you were measuring. So we were measuring millimeters. So that's 21.77 millimeters. That interaction will move the process by, double that amount, by the way, it will move the process by 42 millimeters. Now, given that we were only sitting at 100 millimeters on average, to be able to move the result by 40 millimeters is a lot. So this is a really powerful interaction here. And that's why you were seeing those results move around in a crazy fashion. You need to be able to understand an interaction properly to be able to understand what to do with it. So let's let's take a look. We're gonna we're gonna draw a picture of that interaction now. And in order to do that, I'm gonna go graphs optimization and I'm gonna go interaction surface contour plot. And I'm gonna show you how to use the interaction to turn one of these variables off. And the variable that we're gonna switch off is the hammer friction. So because the hammer friction is the one I want to switch off, I'm going to put that in the first box. Surface temperature is the other variable that I'm drawing a picture of. And the four pictures we're going to draw is the surface, the contour, the interaction, and the 3D interaction plot. I'm going to press go. Create an exit. And what I've now got is four diagrams of the same data set. Now the diagram that I'm going to go to first is this one. This is the interaction plot. And if you look across the bottom here, you've got hammer friction here. Let's try and blow that up a little bit so you can see it better. Um, let's take the text up. Doesn't want, doesn't want to go any bigger, unfortunately. Oh, there we go. Uh, so the hammer friction here at the bottom. Now, the hammer friction is being moved from 35 up to 55. And the scale up the side is what's happening to the process. So this is the millimeter effect 
uh, as we move hammer friction backwards and forwards. Now there are three lines on this particular graph and that's because they are drawn when the surface temperature was set in three different places. So the dark blue line is when surface temperature is set to 40. So what that means is when surface temperature is set to 40 and we swing backwards and forwards on hammer friction, this is the direction we will drive the result. The lower the hammer friction, the higher result will go. However, if we increase the surface temperature to 50, the opposite happens. This is why when we looked at that little example earlier, when we started playing with one factor at a time, we couldn't understand what was going on. And it's because there's an interaction. Now we've switched the surface temperature to 50, the hammer friction does exactly the opposite of what it used to do. By the way, just to point out, when the test was done, and this is the power of DOEs, we only really tested four corner points. We've tested these four corners here, and the rest of the diagram was created by mathematics. That's the power of mathematics to do this. Four tests, you get all of this information. Now, the, the line we're interested in is when surface temperature goes to 45. Because when surface temperature is at 45, how does the process respond to hammer friction? Well, actually, it doesn't respond to hammer friction at all. You've effectively turned hammer friction off by using the interaction, the effect of the interaction. And that's one of the great things that you can do. If hammer friction is very complicated to control or very costly to control, you don't have to control it anymore now. You've switched the effect off. Or indeed, if this line hasn't quite gone horizontal, maybe you've minimized the influence of hammer friction. Now let's take a look at the other diagrams. Now the other diagrams, I'll go to this one first. The other diagrams are sort of uh, different versions of that same data. So this one, which is three-dimensional, the front edge of this twisted plane was one of those lines on the interaction plot. The back edge, which obviously is traveling in the opposite direction, is the other line. So if we looked at this through the front edge of this plane, we would see those two edges opposing one another in a cross shape like that. The midpoint is the horizontal line. You're walking along a flat valley. Okay, so you're going for a walk on a sunny day. You're staying on the flat spot because you don't want to exert too much energy. That's what we're looking at. Now, the reason why you've got the four diagrams is sometimes we are looking for the flat spot. Now, in this case, the flat spot was dead in the middle. It isn't always dead in the middle. And therefore, sometimes you can see the flat spot on this diagram. Sometimes it's better on this diagram. This diagram is looking down like a map. This is like an audience survey map. 45, look, surface temperature of 45, allows us to stay on that grey zone. So we are not changing the process when we move hammer friction backwards and forwards. Uh, so again, that's a different way of being able to see the flat spot. And finally, the diagram on the end is a three-dimensional interaction plot. And it's showing you the change as you move from 50 to 40 on the surface temperature. When we get to 45, this yellow one in the middle, that's the flat one. That's the one that we can see here. Okay, so it's four different pictures of the same data set. And then it's a case of which one's the best to be able to see the flat spot. Because it's the flat spot that is a robust setting um, for hammer friction. So let's go back, um, we'll go back in a moment uh, to see what this does to the process. But if you are using this and you're unsure whether this works or not, here's a simple thing to do. Look, I've got surface temperature set to 45. That was the level that we said that pro made the process insensitive to hammer friction. Now what I can do, I can play with the other value in the yellow field the yellow fields, by the way, are connected to the equation, and they make a prediction down here. There's the predicted value currently, so 100.4758. Well, if I move hammer friction now, very little should happen to that prediction 
because there should be very little happening to the process because we've switched the effect of hammer friction off. So let's dial in 55 at the top. Press go and see what happens. Okay, look at that. It's moved up by 0.4 of a mil, just a tiny little amount. Let's take it down to 35. How far does it move? Moves a total of 0.7 of a millimeter. Now, given that this thing was moving around by 100 mil, by all the variables being moved in the experiment, 0.7 of a millimeter is, is next to nothing. It's less than 1% of what was happening. We've switched hammer friction right off. So I've proved it in the model. Now I want to prove it on the process. So let's go back, switch the process on, and let it settle down. While it's settling down, I better put surface temperature to 45. There we go. And of course, by moving it to 45 in and of itself, it's it's moved the process around. But uh, let's let's let the process settle down a little bit now. So I'll just let it fill the graph. Um, so you can see that the process is settled uh, and where exactly where it's settled the way it goes look and now what I'm going to do and, and this would be the real machine by the way I know this is a simulation but please treat this as if it's the real machine what I'm now going to do is to swing on hammer friction and very little should happen to that top graph and there we go We've effectively switched hammer friction off. Let me swing on, on the upside. It's back up to 50. What's happening? Nothing that you can see. Now, our prediction was that it would move it by about 0.7 of a millimeter. We are not going to see 0.7 of a millimeter on that graph. Um, so effectively, you've switched hammer friction off. So if hammer friction was expensive or difficult to control, and I know when you get things that are difficult to control, you always say, there's nothing we can do. You throw your hands up in despair and say, there is nothing we can do to improve this process. We have variability we cannot control. That is not true. If you can find an interaction with the variable that's giving you a problem, and you can use that interaction to your benefit, you can switch variables off. That's the power of DOE. Only DOE can do this. One factor at a time testing will never show you this. Will never show you this knowledge. This is about great knowledge in your process. Do a DOE. Get great process knowledge. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma, or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.